And, you know, it's really important to communicate with respect because every aspect of your life is going to uh, be determined by that. So you're not going to be able to accomplish a whole lot without communicating that way. We're going to talk about, you know, what it takes to communicate with respect. But, you know, I want to start it off right now by just asking you guys, you know, how many of you guys want to go to college? How many of you guys do, do want to go to college? Okay. Yeah? What colleges would you guys want to go to? Arizona State? Illinois Wesleyan? Um, any college? You like watching any? Those big, those big colleges. Yeah, like the colleges you watch on TV, like yeah, in the yeah, tournament. Yeah. Okay, anyone? Oh, how about you? Ohio State. Ohio State? That's a good one. You guys know, uh, you know, Sam Thompson is? He played last year, a guy named Sam Thompson. No, I know D'Angelo Russell. Okay. <laughs> I'm boys with Sam's brother, but anyway, I thought you might know who he was. But uh, they went to Whitney Young. But uh, how about you? Okay, that's that's a good answer. No. Nah. Duke. Okay. All right. How many guys would want to play basketball in college? Not just go to college, but play hoops. You don't want to. Good baseball player. All right. Well, you want to play a sport. <laughs> so you know, I mean, those things aren't aren't given; they're earned, right? I mean, as you guys know, you know, getting on a basketball team and, and getting good grades, you know, what you know passing your classes I mean those things aren't just handed to you and it's the same thing with getting into a college and playing that you know college basketball so if you want to get into school alone you're gonna to need to communicate with with respect with your teachers coaches teammates and, and a whole lot of people really everyone so you know really I mean the best the best news about this meeting today is what I'm telling you guys is not it's not gonna help me what I'm telling you guys is gonna help you guys you know what I mean? If you guys want to do these things, go to college, play college basketball, this is what is going to help you guys out get to get there. And, you know, I want to kind of like paint a picture. Like imagine if you guys are playing in a game this year, and let's say a recruiter is there from, who knows, Duke or <coughs> Illinois Wesleyan or one of the colleges you guys mentioned. You never know. What if one of those recruiters are there? And if they approach you guys and they talk to you after your game, maybe you have a good game, if you can talk to that person with respect and carry yourself confidently and communicate with them, that's only going to help you guys. You know what I mean? Like, they can like your game all they want. They can like how you play on the court all you want. They could hear that you get, you know, good grades. But if, if they come up to you and you don't know how to really even talk to them or they don't like you, you know, I mean, that's going to have a huge impact on whether if you get into that program or get into that school or not. So, you know, like, when I approached, you know, when I met Coach Billhorn, when we first met, you know, I made sure that, you know, I shook his hand, I looked him in the eye, we had conversation, we built some what we call rapport, yep. and, you know, that's what it's going to take to get in, get to that next level. So, you know, that's really the ultimate thing I want to tell you guys is that this is really going to help you guys to get where you want to be and be successful in life. And then there's a whole lot after college, you know what I mean, whether if it's playing ball somewhere or if it's, you know, getting a job, graduating college. So, um, you know, it's really going to help you. And, um, you know, I actually do some assistant coaching at Harper College. You guys ever heard of Harper College? It's a junior college out in uh, Palatine. And um, there's actually one kid, his name's Marcus. He went, to, um, he went to Curie. He played for the team that won the city championship. He played with um, Cliff Alexander. You guys know who he is? Yeah. He played for Kansas last year. Yeah. And we know, uh, we know the Stamp Brothers, too. Okay. Okay. And then the little brother, Jeremiah, played with us uh, down in Illinois Wesleyan a couple weeks ago. Nice. Yeah, so we know the Curie program. Okay. Yeah, I remember Marcus. Marcus Gatlin? Yeah. Yeah. So Marcus, I think I don't think he even started for that team. I think he might have been like sixth or seventh man, yeah. um, backup point guard. But anyway. Yeah, this is the pizza or else I wouldn't <laughs> So Marcus <coughs> is, he's a good ball player. I mean, he, he's a point guard. He's a solid player, but he's not like, I would even tell him this face like he's not like the best player in the world he's definitely good but this kid shows up early he stays late he gets good grades every time that the coaches interact with him or any fans or any like maybe other parents or teachers really the athletic director i mean anyone that he communicates with he shakes their hand he's like hi how's it going you know he smiles he carries himself well and He's probably, I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't want to speak too soon because he's going to be a sophomore this year, which is, it's a two-year program. 
but he's probably going to get a full scholarship to a D2 school, Division II college, and get a free, scholar, free college and play basketball. Um, he's a good player, don't get me wrong, but the coaches always tell me that they like his attitude, they like the way he carries himself, they like that, that he's a leader and that the other guys on the team can kind of look to him when they need something. Um, and, you know, not just him, but the other guys that are coming in this year, the incoming freshmen, I was talking to the coaches and they were saying, oh yeah, t tell me about a couple different guys. And they were like, yeah, he's got a great attitude. You know, we like this kid. He's probably going to, you know, work out for our program. You know, not, not that way as much for the other guys. You know, the guys that don't have the good attitude, they'll, they'll say, man, that guy's, he's got game. He's good on the court, but I don't know if we want to really, you know, I don't know if we can count on him. I don't know if he's got a good attitude and, and stuff like that. So. Really, it's kind of like almost thinking of yourself as like a brand, thinking of yourself as like a product. Like the way that you represent yourself at all times is going to reflect, you know, what you put out there. And, you know, it's not just really about you guys. That's the other thing that I want to re re remind you of is, you know, every move that you make and every, every interaction that you have with people is a reflection, not just of you guys, but it's a reflection of, you know, your parents, your family members, your friends, you know, who you hang around with, and Coach Billhorn, you know what I mean? He's a guy that really, really cares about you guys, and he's told me on many occasions that he really wants to see all you guys succeed, and he's really passionate about it, and, you know, he doesn't have to be doing this. I mean, he does this because he really loves it, and he wants, to, you know, he really is passionate about it. Same with Vic. You know, I talk to Vic all the time, and he really cares for you guys and wants to see all you guys make it, you know what I mean? So, um it's not just really, you know, a reflection of you, but it's a reflection of your family or who you're brought up with and, and all that. So um, just kind of want to remind you guys of that as well. So um, any questions so far? Or? All right. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, cool. So we're going to talk a little bit. I wanted to pull it up on a computer. Uh, I might wait for, for Coach Billhorn, but basically we're going to talk about kind of like what – what, like what we think it would take, like what it takes to really communicate with respect and communicate that way. A um, couple examples, and I know in a little bit we're gonna break up into small groups and have you guys work on something. Um, but again, this is something that's really gonna help you guys. And, and uh, like you said, you guys all wanna, you know, play college ball and get into college and stuff. So, you know, and then not to mention when you get a job one day or, you know, whatever you do after college, this is definitely gonna be good, good help for you guys, so. Um, have you guys seen any like recruiters or um, interacted with anyone like from like in like last year? Any any stories or anything? Yeah. 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 Like with their, like their personality or, yeah. Was that from a different high school or from a college or? Okay. Okay. Was he here or where did you see him? Okay. OPRF. <laughs> and then you transferred uh, this year. Is your is this going to be your first year coming up? Nice, nice. How, you guys got any other stories or like, even like referees or anything or just like? Well, my, my cousin. <laughs> my cousin was recruited by this. Well, yeah, Harper is a community college, so. Junior college. Junior college. It starts with a W. Oh, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, city college. That's one of the city colleges. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, how did how that did he tell me like how did that go with the recruiters? They came to his high school game and uh, saw him play. His or? coach, his coach uh, told the coach that coach is right that he's a good player, and then the, the coach was like, "All right, tell him to come to one of our practices." And so my cousin went to one of his practices. Yeah. They like. Nice. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, I was just seeing if they could tell me any stories, Coach, about, like, experiences they've had with uh, recruiters or anything like that because, you know, I was telling them when we talked about Marcus and, and uh, some of the Harper guys, 
I was telling them about how, um, you know, ultimately this is going to help them. Like, let's say there's a game this year and there's a recruiter at yeah. the game and approaches them. He might like the way they play on the court and he might like, they might have good grades or whatever. But if, if they don't know how to carry themselves in front of that person, that could really hurt their shot at getting into that well, school. Well, that recruiter will talk to 40 guys whose eyes drop and who can't express themselves. And what we're all about in this program is trying to make you guys something more than just the average, just being one like the other 40. We want you to stand out. And your recruiter will walk away from you and go, that guy had a hell of a handshake. He looked me in the eyes and he used full sentences and he made me feel good about the reason I... And you will set yourself off as someone special when you communicate like that. That's what this is for. Definitely. And that kind of adds to what I was saying about how, you know, it's a reflection of not just yourself, it's bigger than you. It's a reflection of Coach Billhorn, this program. You know, this is a private Catholic school on the north side of Chicago. This is a, you know, an excellent school. You're getting a great education. You have people like Coach Billhorn that really care about you, like I said, and want to see you guys succeed. And a lot of people don't have that privilege. A lot of kids, a lot of young men your age don't have the privilege of going to a private school and, and you know, having the opportunity to elevate that into a college. And, you know, when a lot of colleges see you guys go to St. Ben's, I mean, they're going to say that, oh, okay, that's a better program than, you know, I don't want to name schools, but, you know, think of a school that's not as good as St. Ben's, you know what I mean? <laughs> you guys can do that for me, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you guys are a reflection of this program, you know? So, I mean, that's another great thing. It's really bigger than you guys. It's your parents, your family, your friends, and the school and Coach Billhorn, so. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to show them a quick PowerPoint. There's kind of some steps that I want to show them that I think that, that we're going to go over. You know, and, and guys, this is real simple. I mean, this is not going to be very difficult. It's not rocket science, but it's something to practice now. And this is something that, that we, you know, get out of your system and get, you know, something you can do now today. So really a smile, a firm handshake, and eye contact. I mean, that's what Coach Bill Orn and I talked about. That's kind of like the essential. You know, when you walk in a room, shake someone's hand firmly. You know, not, not one of those little soft handshakes. You know, you got to give them a firm handshake and a smile and make sure you look, make eye contact as well. I know it seems kind of kind of awkward maybe at first, but, you know, when that eye contact is really huge and people really notice that. So um, also speaking with confidence, you know, it's one thing to kind of mumble and have your head down and, and speak kind of quietly. But if you speak with confidence and you carry yourself like that, it's going to show, you know, it's going to show that you have like some swagger, if you will. You know what I mean? Like the way you carry yourself, it's going to show that you have respect for yourself. People are going to see that you really have respect for who you are by the way you carry yourself. And you're also going to, in turn, gain respect from others because how, how is someone else going to respect you if you don't respect yourself? It's, you know, it's pretty simple. So that's something that's really going to show to people. Um, also, it's going to show that you have a vision for your future. I mean, we talked about getting into college playing college basketball or, or baseball in your, in your case, uh, <laughs> playing college sports. How about that? So you guys all have a vision for your future, which I think is great. You're at a great school. You're with a great coach like Coach Bill Horn. You have great teachers and uh, you're in a great position to succeed. So if you carry yourself the ways that we just talked about, it's going to show that you not only show respect for your future, like you, you have respect for what you guys just said you want to do, but you're also building an image for your future. So like how we talked about how, you know, if there's 40 guys that maybe don't carry themselves a certain way, but you guys stand out, like Coach Billhorn just said, that's going to really make or break the difference between you guys and those other guys because we all know it's very competitive out here. And a lot of, a lot of people want to go to college and a lot of people want to play college basketball or baseball. So, um, so those are really kind of like the, the, um, the, the um, essentials to it, if you will. And we'll, we'll do a couple little – we'll do some practicing, but – you know, the last thing I wanted to say before we do that is it's really good to have role models and role models, not just like, you know, your coach or a parent or um, like a mentor. I think that's really essential. And I don't know if you guys, do you guys have like any um, mentors that you, you talk to or any kind of like big brothers or <laughs> what's up? Your dad? Who are they? Yeah. Where at? Okay. Cool. So. All right. All right. Do they still come around or? Yeah. So not just having like those type of role models. I mean, that's really like the most important thing. 
but also like people you can watch on TV, like famous athletes or um, celebrities or people that really are good examples of that. You guys have probably heard of Cam Newton, of course, right? <coughs> and then Deion Sanders, Neon Deion. I know he's a little bit older, but I'm sure you guys have heard about him, right? Yeah, so uh, these are two guys. This is the first interview I want to show you guys. These are two guys that really carry themselves the exact way that, that that's really essential and important, like what we're talking about. Uh, you know, Deion Sanders was, is one of the probably the best athlete ever. Honestly, he played in a uh, he played in a I think it was a Super Bowl and in a baseball game in the same day, or a World Series baseball game and a football game in the same day. Yeah, in the same day, he was like one of the best football players ever. He, he like no one could guard him. I mean, or he no one could do like he shut people down. He was a shut down corner. And then he was also one of the best uh, base runners and base stealers in baseball history. Yeah, <laughs> baseball guy. So anyway, that, that kind of swagger that he played with, he kind of carries today now. And he's on NFL Network. He's one of the top uh, like uh, hosts for NFL Network. He always interviews athletes and stuff like that. And he also founded, founded his own school in Texas where he's working with a lot of uh, high school kids it's called Truth is the name of the school. And he's trying to elevate them into college and get them to graduate and stuff like that. So he's doing a lot of great things. And then Cam Newton, I'm sure you guys have all seen him play if you guys watch football. Uh, just really carries himself really well, dresses well. He's usually in a suit and tie. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, and he just carries himself really well. He's really confident. And uh, I think he's a really good guy to kind of emulate. So I'm going to watch, just show you guys a quick interview where Deion Sanders interviewed Cam Newton. And I just want to... Just watch, oh man. Oh, let's go Bengals. Yeah, remember him? Then he got the automatically short. He what? Yeah, he's point guard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he played for Duke and uh, got in a motorcycle, ac motorcycle accident. Yeah, he was. He was. Um, but now he's a, a host of um, ESPN College Basketball, and he's he's like just really really good on TV. He's really well spoken, dresses really well. Uh, just again, I think someone kind of like how Cam Newton is, just really carries himself really well, and um, he makes. I mean, he makes good money, man. I mean, being on TV, being a ESPN personality. I mean, he doesn't quite have. There's the ESPN ticker right there. He doesn't quite have the. Uh, you know, obviously he ruined his his sports career. Um, by getting hurt, but he's uh, you know still found a way to really be successful other ways too. Cameron Jarrell Newton, who are you? Simple and plain, I'm a blessed individual. Very. That is living a dream right now, and what you see is what you get. Thousand watt smile. Hey, it's not nothing that. You Why know, you I always just put smiling? On. Why you always smiling? Cause God gave it to me, man. What takes that smile off your face? This is the first time in your life where you have naysayers. People doubt you. Right. How does it make you feel? I'm hungry. Yeah? I just sit back and just wonder, like, well, this particular person feels like I'm going to be a bust. You got to understand, this is not a racial thing. Many people think it's racist mm -hmm. because you're African-American quarterback. But Ryan Mallett, they tearing him up right now. Right. Last year, Tim Tebow they tore him apart. It's got to bother you, though, just a bit. It really doesn't. It's always somebody. You know, like you said, last year's Tim Tebow, this year's me. But, you know, I'm not here to talk about that or, or say if it's not fair or unfair. You know, I'm just going to live my life. And the only thing that I can control at the end of the day is what I do. Heisman Trophy, the national championship, could be the first pick of the draft. Look at you smiling, man. You know what I mean? Which one has the most weight? Heisman, National <laughs> Championship, could be the first pick of the draft. Oh, man. You blushing like a baby, man. Man. Hey, that's a big great. old 250 pound baby, man. <laughs> you sitting up here blushing. No, nah, but the one that has the most weight individually, it is the Heisman. I'll be sitting up here lying to you. You have a father, man. Mm -hmm. Now, the Heisman pop on that, but at the draft, he's here. Oh, yeah. What does that mean to you? A lot. You got kids. You got a son. Right. This is something that you've grown since you was carrying him, and now hopefully I could be carrying him. 
Right. As far as his lifestyle. What team you think out there best fits your ability? You could put me anywhere. I will, I will adapt. Two people that I always talk about as far as preparing for each game is Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. You have to respect that. But one thing that I also look at is, you know, no offense to these guys or those guys, is that's not God-given. Right. Preparation is not God-given. You had to hear the things about Jamarcus Russell. You had to hear some of the, the top picks that have just turned into a bust. Do you ever think about those guys? I do. And, you know, if, if a particular athlete did this and made a mistake in it, and me knowing that growing up and listening to it, growing up and seeing their mistakes, why would I do the same thing? Hmm. You have any doubts right now, man? Oh, no. No doubts about who's going to take you? Oh, no. Where you want to go? I want to go number one. That's a great answer. For real. I mean, I, I, I ain't going to sit up here and lie to you. And when you walk across that stage, it's going to be like triumph. Right. But then the party really begins. Because now the question is, are you ready for that offense? So you the first one there? Always. Last one to leave? Will be. You ready to lead? To some degree, I will be. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't sit up and say, hey, I'm the leader. It's, it's a time and a place for everything. Right. I'm not going to go in there and demand, hey, look, so-and-so, you listen to me. Right. No, nah, man, because, you know, I'm new to this. So I have to learn the ropes. I have to learn the ins and the outs. How do you learn that? Is there a guy out there right now? I don't have no, man, he's a, this particular person. I'm a nibble of the Vic, a little dab of the Tom Brady. He's so suave. I like, you know I, 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 I like that. You know what? I like it, and this is my first time sitting down, which you get right. a chance to see it first. And I can see how people on the other side of the camera will say, man, you know he think he all that. <laughs> but as an athlete, I like it. Right. If I was an owner, I would love it. Confident. Right. It's not cocky. Right. I understand that my ability is God-given. Do you I smell the cologne I'm wearing? Huh? The cologne I'm wearing, do you smell it? It's no. called confidence. I wear it every day. That's cool. You have that same scent. It smells good, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let's go to Radio City right now. With the first pick of the NFL draft. Carolina Panther chooses Cam Newton. Man, it's going to be this big old bear that jumps off my back like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it's here, man, because I want to be the best, man. No matter where you go, look in that camera and tell them what they're going to get. No matter where I go, you're going to get a, a particular person that strives to be the best, day in and day out. I like that, sir. So what, uh, I guess kind of to recap, like wh anything that you guys notice about both of them, like anything that stands out, how they carry themselves, about what we're talking about? Sorry. <coughs> Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Anything else? Or? Right. There's two guys who talk to each other and they have they're locked in each other's eyes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, everything you guys said is 100 percent right. The way that they made eye contact, their smile, their confidence. I mean, the confidence really stands out, right? I mean, you can see these guys are, you know, very confident individuals. They're not nervous to be on TV. They're not nervous. Cam Newton's not nervous in front of one of the greatest athletes of all time. You know. By Dion is really taking control of the opportunity to, to, to run, to do the interview. So, you know what I mean? That, that's really what we want from you guys. We want to get you guys to the point where you can be speaking that, just like them, in front of a recruiter, in front of your teacher. And it's not just recruiters, but your teachers, 
uh, anyone in the school, you know, Coach Billhorn, teammates, referees, right? I mean, we want these guys to be communicating that way at all times. And, you know, don't, conf don't confuse confidence with cockiness. I mean, there's definitely a fine line between the two. You can be really confident. You know, I think Deion, Deion Sanders does a great job of that on TV. He's very confident, but it's, he still has kind of a way about him that's still, you know, he's, you know, he's a little bit humble still too. So there's kind of a fine line between all that, and that's really what we wanted. If you also notice that Cam Newton did say he's going to be the first guy there and the last guy to leave, and, and that's what I was telling you guys about uh, Marcus, who's hopefully going to get that scholarship, and, and he's had a, had a great run at Harper so far. You know, that stuff really stands out. If you're the first guy in, the last guy out, that's really helpful too. So, um, yeah, glad you guys noticed that. There's one more I want to show you just for like, uh, it's like a two or three minute clip. That's the Jay Williams one. I know that um, you guys were familiar with him. And this is a good interview. He's interviewed by Oprah. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with her. She's one of the most, you know, richest, yeah, known and wealthiest people. I think she's from Chicago. So this is like three minutes. We're going to watch this. Uh, again, Jay Williams, um, like we talked about, he played for uh, Duke. He was a McDonald's All-American, got drafted by the Bulls, did have a big car accident um, where he basically got injured and ruined his career. But he's made a really, really good career out of being a ESPN analyst for college basketball. And he really carries himself well, really great communicator, dresses well. And I think he's another role model that you guys can kind of um, follow as well. Jay Williams was poised to become one of the biggest superstars in the NBA. Williams spinning to the and scores! Until a devastating mistake brought it all to a heartbreaking halt. Police believe he lost control of the bike, crashing into a telephone pole. Jay says he spent the last decade on a journey to both forgive himself and reclaim his purpose. He is now a respected commentator with ESPN. First of all, do you have a ritual on Sunday mornings? I do, yeah. I do. I, uh, I go to this church that is fantastic. Actually, uh, it's led by a guy named Carl Lentz. It's mm -hmm. called Hillsong United. Oh, in, in New York? In New York City. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it is one of the most gratifying things. So I wake up every morning, I meditate for about 30 minutes. You do? On Sunday mornings, yes I do. I find some time to, well, if I can't sit with myself, who can? And uh, just reflecting upon where I want to be, uh, who I am, and positive thoughts. And I go to church and I, I pray for everybody but myself. Really? Yeah, well, I mean, my thing is, the more, I, the more energy I put into the people I love, my life will be happy. What motivates and inspires you now? The people I love mm. on a daily basis. Making my mother proud, making my father proud, making my friends proud, mm -hmm. and be able to, to do good for others and to do more. What's the lesson that's taken you the longest to learn? The lesson that has taken me the longest to learn, hmm, it would probably be that life isn't an accident. Well, that's the lesson, is that regardless of whatever form of adversity you go through, you're going through it for a reason. And as long as you don't let that adversity define you, and you look at it and you grow from it, then we're extremely lucky to do so. Uh, favorite music on your iPod? Miles Davis. I'm a throwback kind of guy. Wow. I like Miles Davis. I like blues. I like Jimi Hendrix. Best book you read lately? Best book I read lately? Um, Purpose Driven Life. I read it again, actually. Really? Like, yeah, I love that book. Great book. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm real throwback. I am still listening to Gina Turner, honey. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real throwback. When I really want to, like, light up the room, it's me and Gina. <laughs> I am very throwback. But Miles, that's way throwback. Yeah. That's great. Thank, Thank you. So you were wonderful. Really so anything there similar or different to what we watched before? Anything you guys noticed, sir? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. For sure. 
Anything else? He dresses well too. He's got like, you know, I don't know. That suit was pretty sharp. I like the way all these guys dress, but you know, it's, it's another thing, you know, when I, you know, dress, with, dress for success as they say. But anyway, I just think these guys are really good role models for you guys. And um, aside from a, a mentor or a friend or your parents or family members, you know, I think it's good to follow people like this that are really making it. Um, you know, again, Deion Sanders and Jay Williams are both television personalities. They're on TV every day. And you know, those are people to look up to because they're constantly in front of people, constantly presenting themselves well. And um, you know, I, I just think it's good to kind of follow that as well. So um, yeah, so have some role models with that. And you know, that kind of concludes a lot of what we were gonna talk about in terms of the, uh, the talk for now.